Hey everyone, we're back with a quick little tutorial video just to bring you up to speed on six of the biggest misplayed hands you're gonna see in a casino. A lot of these are hands where people think they're making the right moves and what they're actually doing is losing themselves an absolute ton of money. So we're gonna show you how to do things the right way, save yourself money in the long run. Nothing to do with card counting in this video. This is gonna be about basic strategy just to try to get you to the point where you're losing as little money as possible to a casino. Once you've done that, then you can start to count cards and give yourself an edge. I'm gonna start over here on the far side where you've got an ace and a seven for the player. And a lot of people are really, really hesitant to take another card. They think 18 is a really strong hand. The problem is, with the exception of a seven or an eight, you always want to be taking another card when you've got a soft 18 like this with your initial two cards. We're going to back this up with math, and there's a great website called wizardofodds.com where you can see their blackjack hand calculator. You can put in any two cards you've got, any one card the dealer's got, and it's going to tell you how much of your money you're going to lose or win depending on what you do. And the answer with a soft 18 is that you want to double it against two, three, four, five, and six, any of the so-called bust cards. And the differences here can be huge. A lot of people want to stand against those cards, but you're going to want to double down. Against a two, it's just a tiny difference, about a third of a percentage difference between doubling it, where you're gonna win about 11.6% of your money versus 11.2% if you stand. But it gets bigger when you head to a three. Now that's a three and a half point difference almost, 14% of your money you're going to win if you stand, 17.5% if you double. This gets even bigger when you're talking about a four. That's gonna be a 7% difference in how much money you're going to win when you double against a four rather than standing. Even bigger against a five, we're talking 10% plus, and for those of you who bet big money, 10% of the amount you're betting is a pretty big amount in these situations. You're going to win 30% on average when you double against a five, less than 20% on average if you stand against a five. Then against a six, I think even the people who are hesitant are usually smart enough to double in this situation. But if you're not, you are costing yourself almost 13.5% of the money that you're betting in the long run if you stand on those soft 18s. So that's a look at the low cards and how you can make money. But what about against a nine, 10, or an ace? Again, people know this is a strong card for the dealer. You probably know with an 18 against the dealer's nine, 10, or ace, you're probably gonna lose. But the question is, how do you lose the least often? And the way you do that with a hand like this is you hit it, you take a card. You obviously don't double in this situation, but take a look at the numbers once again here. When you've got a soft 18 against the dealer's nine, you're going to lose almost 20% of your money in the long run if you just stand on it. If you hit, you nearly cut that in half to less than 10% of your money. Now you may say, what does it matter how much I lose? It matters because by losing the least in the situations where you don't have the advantage, you can make up for it by winning the most in the situations where you do have the advantage. That's how you cut down the house edge. Take a look at the numbers against a 10 here. It's a fairly small difference, but not insignificant. If you stand against a 10, you're looking at almost 18% of your money gone in the long run. If you hit, you cut that to nearly 14%. Same thing against an ace. You're looking at about a 6.5% difference in the amount of money you're going to lose in the long run hitting against an ace rather than standing against it. So there's everything you wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask about a soft 18. The question is, what about a soft 17? I think most people know here, you should be hitting a soft 17. I still see some people standing on them, and there is no situation in which you should be standing on a soft 17. You should always be hitting it. So we could go over every single card that you're playing a soft 17 against, but there's one in particular I wanna talk about, and that's when you're playing a soft 17 against a seven. A lot of people will see this hand and think by standing on their soft 17, they're giving themselves a good chance at a push. They might get lucky and the dealer might bust. But if you look at the numbers, it's an enormous difference between standing versus hitting on that soft 17. When you stand on your soft 17 against a seven, you're gonna lose more than 10% of your money in the long run. When you hit against it, you've actually turned a losing hand into a winning hand because you are going to win more than 5% of your money in profit over the long run when you've got a six against a seven. 
So when you see that soft 17, I know a lot of you probably know this already, but some of you don't, and I see them at the blackjack tables, do not stand on your soft 17 no matter what. All right, so there's soft 17 against a seven. Remember, you wanna be taking cards with your eight six. Here's a situation though, where obviously you don't wanna take another card. You've got a blackjack and the dealer is showing an ace. And you can probably guess what I'm gonna talk about here. It's something called even money. And it still amazes me. There are people out there, there are YouTubers out there who will try to tell you that it makes sense to take even money. Now, card counters will tell you, of course, it does sometimes make sense when you've got a true count of plus three or better for shoe games and plus two and a half or better for double deck games. But we're gonna get into that down the road. You don't need to know all of that just yet. What you do need to know are the odds when it comes to blackjack against a dealer ace. And here's what it comes down to. When you've got the blackjack against the dealer ace, and you don't take even money, 69% of the time, nice, you are going to get the three to two payout. The dealer is not going to have blackjack. When you take even money, you're only going to get bailed out and see that you took even money when you were going to push otherwise, 31% of the time. Now, that is not enough to make it worthwhile for you to be constantly giving up that 50% bonus only because 30% of the time you are going to end up pushing. And it's just gonna be part of the game. There are gonna be times where you've got blackjack, dealer's got an ace, and the dealer has the blackjack and you don't get the extra money. You're just gonna to have to learn to live with that. And if you can learn to live with that, you're gonna take home nearly 4% more money in those situations than you would otherwise. Do not take even money until you've learned how to count cards. All right, so we busted the even money myth. Our next one here is gonna be a much worse situation for you to be in. Anytime you've got a 16 and the dealer's showing one of their higher cards. This is prevalent in so many casinos, at so many blackjack tables. People stand on 16 because they're scared. And you've gotta take a look at the numbers because you want to be hitting in these situations. Now, for the purposes of this discussion, we're gonna take out the surrender option, which of course against a nine, 10, or ace is probably gonna be your best bet. I know a lot of you out there play at tables that don't offer surrender. So we're gonna just talk about hitting and standing for this purpose. Now, one of the worst things you can do is to stand against a dealer seven. Take a look at the numbers here. This is actually the biggest disadvantage you're going to have to standing. And a lot of people think, well, 16 against a seven, I'm so close. Why not just stand and, and uh, push my luck and see if I can get the dealer to bust? Well, because it's just not gonna happen all that often. And you're going to lose 47.6% of your money in the long run if you stand in that situation. You are going to lose just 41% if you make the right move and hit. That's a more than six and a half percent difference. And that's the biggest of all the situations we're going to look at here. Take a look when you got a 16 against a dealer eight. 5.81% is the difference between hitting and standing. Against a dealer nine, again, surrender if you can, but if you can't, it's almost the same to be hitting against it. You're gonna lose 50 and a half percent thereabouts of your money in the long run versus the just 50% you'll lose by surrendering every time. And the difference between hitting and standing here is more than three and a half percent. Against a 10, I'll admit it, it's borderline. You're only saving a half a percentage point when you hit your 16 against a 10 as opposed to standing. But half a percent can add up to a lot in the long run. Lastly, here's a look at the numbers for 16 against an ace. I think most people are smart enough to hit against the ace because the dealer is so likely to not bust when they've got an ace showing. But you see here, it's nearly a 6% difference, almost as big as the difference we were talking about with the dealer seven showing when you hit against an ace instead of standing. So you wanna save your money in the long run. You're in a bad situation to begin with. Make sure you are hitting those hard 16s. Don't believe anybody who tells you, as long as you just do it the same way every time, then you're good. You are not going to be good. All right, so there's hard 16, and we only got two more to look at here. I'll try to go through them a little bit quickly. And I think I'm gonna do a video eventually on splitting in general, but nines seem to be a hand that people are really scared to split, and they shouldn't be, because they're one of the best hands to split, apart from aces, of course. All of these cards we're showing right here are ones that you should be splitting your nines against. So that's nine or less, except for a seven. Now, I won't show you the numbers for every single one, but one of the ones I find people are most afraid to split their nines against is a dealer nine, because you figure the dealer's already got a very strong card. Why do I wanna have two hands against that dealer nine? 
And you're absolutely right that you are in a disadvantageous position by splitting against the dealer nine. But much like we were talking about with those hard 16s, you're still going to lose way less money in the long run by doing the right move and splitting those nines. Look at it here. If you stand against that dealer nine, you're gonna lose more than 18% of your money in those situations in the long run. If you split, you are cutting that disadvantage by more than 10% of your money in the long run, just losing about 8% of your money if you split those against the nine. So split your nines against a nine. Here's the one exception in those lower cards. You might say, why do you take out seven there? Well, there is a difference when you've got the nines against a seven, you've got that 18 against dealer seven. There is about a three and a half percentage point advantage to standing in that situation rather than splitting your nines. So that's the one you've got to keep in the back of your mind is the exception to the nine or less rule when we're talking about splitting those nines. But do not be afraid to do it. You're giving yourself two very strong starting cards when you split those nines. All right, so we hope to see everybody splitting nines as much as possible now. And this brings us to our final hand of the tutorial. And this one will drive people crazy. You'll have people yelling at you. You will have dealers looking at you like you're crazy. I had one player at a table when I was in Vegas recently. I thought he was gonna get up and try to fight me when I doubled my soft 19 against a dealer six. And to so many people who think about having a winning hand, not wanting to ruin a winning hand, it seems like such a bad idea to double your soft 19 against the dealer six. But take a look at the numbers. We're gonna to go to the math once again. It's not a huge difference, but it's just under 1% of your money in the long run. You're gonna win more of if you make the right move and double your soft 19 when the dealer is showing a six. Now, when you add card counting into the mix, you're gonna do this even more often. You're gonna be doubling the soft 19 against a dealer five anytime you got a true count of one or better. You're gonna be doubling it against a dealer four anytime you've got a true count of three or better. So get used to it now by doubling it against the dealer six because that's going to win you more money in the long run and it'll set you up well for the kinds of deviations you're gonna to have to learn as you start to turn the tides and start making some money at blackjack in the casino. Those are your six biggest misplays. There are a few more we'll probably talk about down the road. A couple things to keep in mind, always be doubling your 11s and there are going to be some situations where you're gonna to wanna to split 10s. We'll get to that in the future though. For now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like or comment down below if you disagree with the math on any of these hands. And hopefully these help you out once those casinos are back open again. Thanks everybody for watching.